is up you guys welcome back to another one if you are new to this channel i am gold pony i do new car truck suv reviews on youtube and today we are in the brand new 2024 mercedes-benz gla 250 courtesy of mercedes-benz of hagerstown in hagerstown maryland for more information on their inventory please feel free to check out the link in the description box below so today we're in this one because there have been several changes for the 2024 gla including a new look refreshed housings for the headlights and the taillights plenty of changes on the interior as well including the tech so really just a ton of changes for this one for 2024 and of course this SUV is going to be competing with others like the Volvo XC40 uh, BMW X1 just to name a couple so ultimately in this video we will be testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking steering feel ride quality sound system exhaust clip all that fun stuff so having said all that what do you guys say let's just go ahead and jump right into it and as always let's start with pricing and so as you can imagine there are a couple different configurations for the 2024 gla 250 you got the front wheel drive setup starting at forty one thousand eight hundred fifty dollars then the formatic all-wheel drive starting at forty three thousand eight hundred fifty dollars but regardless of that setup that you go with the power plant on the gla 250 is going to be the same powering the beast is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder with a mild hybrid system putting out 221 horsepower 5500 rpm 258 power feet of torque coming in at 1800 rpm that power being sent to front wheels or all wheels through an eight speed dual clutch with paddle shifters which you guys of course know we will be testing out here in a little bit but zero to 60 time is going to come in at approximately 6.8 seconds for the front wheel drive 6.6 .6 seconds then for the all wheel drive with mpg numbers coming in at 25 in the city 34 on the highway for the front wheel drive that's very impressive 24 city 32 then on the highway for the all wheel drive taking premium unleaded fuel but so that before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in the GLA. I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode that's labeled dynamic. It's this black button right here behind the cup holders. It stands for dynamic select by the way, but drive modes will include comfort, eco, sport, individual, and off-road, adjusting things like the shift points, throttle response, the steering sensitivity, the eco start stop system. Also, if you were to put it in that off-road mode, it will also give you a 50-50 torque split for added traction. And if you were to actually put it in that individual drive mode, that actually allows you if you wanted to to put it in full manual shift mode with the paddle shifter so that's pretty stinking cool as well so now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters and acceleration here to the test i want to see how quickly we can get this one up to speed and let's see how quickly these paddle shifters are going to react for us as well all right here we go in three two one go cool. paddle shifters are quick man did not expect that. Paddle shifters are lightning quick, like AMG quick. I'm telling you, wow. And this is an SUV too. Typically with SUVs, if there's paddle shifters on there, it's kind of just a gimmick. But with this Mercedes Benz, this is incredible. I, I did not expect that. That was really amazing. But as far as acceleration goes, yeah, there's plenty of acceleration to merge you onto any highway. But again, maybe it's because it's a dual clutch. I, I guess I should expect that with any dual clutch really, but that was insanely quick reacting paddle shifter. So very impressive, well done Mercedes-Benz. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So up front, you will find 12.6 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.6 inch solid rear discs. As far as that 60 year stopping distance goes, that comes in at 120 feet even, which is a very respectable number, quite honestly. So as far as the braking feel goes, since there's nobody behind us, it's on the firm side. I love it. You keep crushing it, Mercedes-Benz. So a lot of times with SUVs, it's going to find a very soft braking feel, sometimes even a squishy braking feel, but it's not squishy, of course. It's not soft braking feel. It feels like a sports sedan. It instantly brings you to a stop. So once again, Mercedes-Benz crushing it with the braking setup on the GLA. Then touching on suspension and handling. Up front, you're going to get an independent McPherson strut front suspension. In the back, independent four-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, it's been perfectly fine and marshall a little test drive here today i'm going to take it out of that sport driving mode don't need that crazy acceleration all the time but yeah it's been absorbing hagerstown's road imperfections quite nicely so absolutely no issues when it comes to that as far as steering feel goes it is on the heavier or firmer side of things i should say that let me put it back in sport driving mode i shouldn't have done that but yeah so it definitely makes a difference depending upon the drive mode that you put it in it's a much heavier feel in that sport driving mode and then when you take it out of that sport driving mode it's a much 
looser feel, but still kind of tends to lean on the heavier side of things. So again, kind of leaning towards more of a driver's SUV uh, compared to like more of just a comfort SUV. So I personally like that. So once again, crushing it. As far as cabin noise goes, we're going 57 miles per hour right now. I'll let you guys be the judge of that. So not a whole lot of exterior wind noise or road noise coming into the cabin. So for me, I personally don't have any issues there. The touching on rear visibility, I actually can see perfectly fine out the back. So 100% not gonna have any issues there either. Kind of interesting though, that rear glass is kind of like a, uh, a chart, like an Excel spreadsheet. It's <laughs> probably the wrong way to describe it, but there's like little squares, little boxes on the rear glass. So I'm sure that's for the antenna uh, for the radio or something because it's probably not on the roof, but still kind of interesting. But rain sensing windshield wipers touching on forward visibility actually do come standard on the GLA. So I absolutely love that. So whenever this thing detects any kind of mist or rainfall, it's gonna automatically turn on those windshield wipers for it, kind of like automatic headlights. So big fan there. And there is a head-up display available if you wanted that. That actually comes with the uh, Pinnacle trim package that goes for $5,150. So that's going to display your speed, speed limit, and safety features up onto your windshield so you don't have to take your eyes off the road, better assisting with forward visibility yet again. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLA 250. All right, so here she is, you guys, the new 2024 Mercedes-Benz GLA 250 finished in night black, in case you were curious of the exact exterior color name that we had on this one with us here today, but a nice facelift for the 2024 model year, new front fascia, also slightly revised headlight housings as well, but we'll get more into that in a second here. As always, let's go ahead and start with where the GLA is made, taking a look at the VIN. First character is the letter W, you guys know what that means that means this one is built and assembled in Germany as it should be but starting up front horizontal aluminum trim on that front grille does come standard you're gonna find the uh, vertical black slats that come standard on the GLA however if you were to go with that AMG line package it goes for three thousand one hundred fifty dollars by the way that gives you a diamond block front grille so that's probably what a lot of you may be used to seeing again that comes with the AMG line package but aluminum or gloss black front trim found on the uh, kind of lower front portion of that front end there illuminated stars if you wanted that, that goes for $450, that's available. To the sides, LED headlights with LED daytime running lights, again, with revised housings for 2024. You do get the automatic feature with those headlights. You also get automatic high beams that now come standard. So if you have your high beams on at night and it senses a vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's gonna automatically dim them back to low beams. Then when a vehicle is gone, it's gonna automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there. So you gotta love that. But with the pinnacle trim, that adds active LED headlights lights that's pretty cool so if you're going around a bend at night those headlights are going to swivel based on the direction of your steering angle better help illuminating what is around that bend so you're less likely to hit a deer or a sasquatch or whatever the case so that's pretty cool as well but anyways down to the corners there you guys can probably see that led fog lights they actually do come standard on the gla but that pretty much rounds out the front end of this one. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so now since we are around to the side of this one, all the way to the top, you will find aluminum roof rails. They do come standard. Rear privacy glass also coming standard on this one. Chrome window surrounds also standard. And also on the door handles, you have a little bit of chrome accenting to kind of tie in together with everything, I guess. Take a look at the side mirrors. They are body colored power adjustable side mirrors. They will be heated with LED integrated turn signals as well. Little bit of chrome or gloss black trim on the side skirts that is available with gloss black if you were to go with that amg line package of course then take a look down at the wheel setup there are so many different wheel designs yet again for this one 18 inch twin five spoke alloys do come standard 19 inch amg twin five spoke alloys with the amg line package of course but there are 18 19 and 20 inch optional designs to really make this one your own if you wanted to we do have one of those optional designs of course but i like this design there are actually three glas on the lot and i chose this one because of the wheel design, believe it or not. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back. All right, so now since we are around to the back of this one, like I was mentioning with the rear visibility earlier, there's no shark fin antenna. I didn't think there was going to be, and I guess that's probably why that grid is on the back rear window there. But anyways, still clean look. I do like that though. Rear spoiler with an integrated brake light does come standard just below that rear window wiper, of course. 
LED tail lights coming standard again. Little bit sleeker for 2024. Reworked housings, I guess you could say. So I do like that. Rear diffuser with the AMG line package, of course. But then to the sides, you will find integrated dual exhaust outlets with chrome tips. So having said that, I do believe you guys know what we have to do next here. As always, here is that exhaust clip. All right, so now since we are around to the back of the GLA, when it comes to opening that rear lift gate, it is a manual lift gate that does come standard. However, power lift gate is available. We do have it, of course. So there is a button on the key fob. There's a button on the uh, lift gate itself. And there is actually a button on the driver's side door then as well to go ahead and open it. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 19 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 40-20-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down quite well, bumping that up to 50.5 cubic feet then cargo cover does come standard back there cargo lighting as well there are some chrome plated tie down anchors some side pockets with some netted storage there is an elastic strap if you wanted to throw something in there you don't want to slide around perhaps grocery bag hooks do come standard 12 volt power outlet and if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor you will actually find some in-floor storage which does come standard not a ton of it but the fact that it's there is pretty darn cold but then making our way up to the rear legroom that comes in at 38 Eight inches even for reference I mean even six feet tall this is how much space I had in the rear seats there rear center armrest with cup holders is optional we actually don't have that option believe it or not so that's kind of surprising rear ventilation does come standard you got a little bit of storage back there and uh, dual phone charging ports coming standard and a 115 volt power outlet that's going to be optional we do have that option so that was pretty cool but then making our way up to the front seats eight-way power driver seat with four-way power lumbar coming standard memory settings though for both the driver and the passenger that is pretty darn cool a lot of times it'll be just for the driver but you actually do get it for the passenger here as well which is pretty pretty rare actually but mb tux upholstery does come standard on the gla leather seating goes for one thousand four hundred and fifty dollars if you wanted that heated front seats for five hundred dollars um overall as far as seat comfort goes actually really wasn't that bad i found it perfectly fine the four-way lumbar support worked well uh the seams on this one are vertical and that usually helps not create awkward pressure points so no issues with the seating for me but then taking a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping and is leather wrapped heated steering wheel if you wanted that goes for four hundred and fifty dollars the 10 to 2 grips definitely on the thicker side of things a big fan of the steering wheel there then make your way to the startup let me start by showing you guys the key here you got your uh, mercedes-benz logo front and center lock on top unlock just beneath that and the button to pop the rear lift gate there as well but it is all keyless entry with a push button starts all i am going to do here is simply put my front of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents there and so once started up as far as that gauge cluster goes it's going to be a 10 and a quarter inch digital gauge cluster that comes standard across the board and there is so many different things you could do with this gauge cluster if you press the home button on the left side of the steering wheel there that gives you a bunch of different loadouts you can change it to an understated loadout a sport look of course there's the classic look you can also put just pure navigation on there as well and there's a cool off road mode actually too so all of these different looks coming standard across the board so I love that so I could probably just play around with that for quite a bit but of course since it's digital it is everything you could possibly need there's a digital speedometer there's your time of day how many miles you have left until you hit empty there's a outside temperature so yeah it definitely gets the job done quite well but so then making our way to overall interior quality here panorama roof goes for fifteen hundred dollars we got that option so actually the rear passengers have their own individual moon roof back there that was kind of cool universal garage door opener for up to three different garage doors is found just below that frameless rear view mirror gotta love that wireless phone charger coming standard dual zone climate control as well you do have 64 colors of ambient lighting probably not going to be able to see it too well in this video because it's the middle of the day here but but anyways, just take my word for it there. Aluminum trim goes for $175. If you wanted that wood trim goes to $325. Otherwise, for the most part, the standard setup is uh, the Mercedes-Benz Star trim, which is found just above the passenger side glove box, also on the doors. I think it looks pretty darn
darn good. If we were to go with the AMG line package, it's actually an illuminated star trim, which is even cooler in my personal opinion. But just in front of those cup holders, they got a little bit of rubberized storage there. Of course, cup holders just beneath that. A little bit of more rubberized storage just behind the drive mode button there and within the center armrest. It's actually, it goes down pretty deep. It's a deep storage in there, quite a bit of space and a couple USB charging ports within that center armrest as well. So overall when it comes to interior quality i think it's very well thought out i love the air vents and the way they're designed i also love how when you turn the interior lights on and off it's kind of a fade to on kind of effect and then when you turn them off it's a fade to off effect so very slow kind of dimming effect i guess you could call it so Anyways, Mercedes-Benz, as always, did a wonderful job on their interior, but now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. There's now a newly standard 10.3-inch infotainment screen you guys are looking at here. Bluetooth and audio streaming, of course, but wireless Android Auto, Apple CarPlay coming standard. There's a ton of different themes you could check out up there as well, so I always like to play around with those. There's also, of course, the Hey Mercedes. How can I help? Turn on the radio. And it did. The, I just turned the volume all the way down because I didn't want to interrupt our video. But yeah, so there's that functionality as well. So that is definitely pretty cool. Of course, you could check out your uh, ambient lighting colors within this infotainment screen as well, along with your radio information. And so when it comes to the uh, sound systems there are two of them six speakers come standard however there is an optional 12 speaker Burmester surround sound system with 590 watts and a nine channel digital amplifier we got that today if you're interested in that option it's 970 dollars so having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next here let's go ahead and turn on the radio see what we got playing today and let's test out the clarity of this one this is actually really good. It kind of feels like you're at a concert. The bass was, it felt like the bass was coming from all directions. I don't usually get that too often. So it was a really good sound system for the GLA. I'll definitely say that. And when you first get in this one, it makes this cool kind of intro sound too. And you could tell there's a ton of bass in this thing. But anyways, last thing I want to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the GLA in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board. Very high definition as well. There is a surround view monitor available with that pinnacle trim package if you wanted that. But as always, that is going to lead us into safety. And so front side, side curtain airbags do come standard. Driver and passenger knee airbags up front as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors and tethers to children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, high pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, active brake assist, Mercedes-Benz emergency call service, attention assist, a blind spot monitor, and cross wind assist then as well. And then there is some optional safety like adaptive cruise control that goes for $600, rear side impact airbags that goes for $700 in case you wanted those. But Overall, when it comes to my final thoughts here of the GLA, the ambient lighting is great. I always say that it's hard to see here in the daytime, but you're going to have to take my word for it. If it were nighttime right now, you guys would be totally mesmerized there. The tech as well, completely great. I love how you're able to adjust all the different loadouts for the gauge cluster. I think that's pretty darn cold. So much to do within the infotainment screen as well. Excellent driving dynamics is probably the first thing I noticed when I got in this one. Crazy quick paddle shifters, great acceleration. The dual clutch works amazing in the GLA. Great braking. The steering feel is great in that sport driving mode as well. So really Mercedes-Benz crushed it with the driving dynamics as expected. Excellent interior quality as well. I love that wood trim is available because whenever I get in a Mercedes with wood trim, it always smells like a new home and that's pretty cool. But really the only thing I could think of to make this thing even better is some more interior color options. So like like, I would love to see something different that really stands out, like maybe a dark green or a navy blue or something like that. And maybe that's out there. I don't know, but it's different. It would definitely get my attention. It's probably something that I personally would put in this one. But anyways, let me know what you guys think of the GLA in the comment section below. That is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to YouTube. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews because that is what we do here in this channel after all. Do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stay gold.